Good morning. You're watching Inside Tech Soma. On this episode, we're talking about how to keep your kids' minds active during the summer months so they don't forget everything they learned during school. Kathy Stearns from Sylvan Learning Center right here in Wichita Falls joins me this morning. Kathy, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about why it is so important that we keep our kids' minds active and going during those summer months. Well, during the summer, the students have a, an opportunity to lose a lot of learning. Um, studies have shown that they can lose up to two and a half months worth of learning. Um, so teachers and schools have the challenge when they go back to school of, of reteaching. So it's very important to keep them enrichment going and, and involvement going in the summer so they don't lose that much. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like a lot of kids, when summer hits, their minds just go out the door absolutely. and they're in summer mode. Um, what are ways that parents can encourage their kids to keep their minds active? Because I know in the summer, kids really, all they want to do is just play and hang out with friends and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of things parents can do. They need to be creative, um, but they can make a lot of everyday fun things educational as well. Um, we recommend reading, always reading. Um, you can have a family book club um, where maybe one member of the family will read one night and another member might read another night. Mm -hmm. um, but just find creative ways to keep them reading, reading several books over the summer. Um, we had one suggestion that said, uh, go on a bike hike and take a book. Um, and at the end of the hike, everybody sits down and reads. So just okay. do some creative different thing. Yeah, get, um, like you said, creative with it. And like Kathy said, reading is a good way to keep, keep kids' minds Absolutely. active. Absolutely. Um, and I went to the Wichita Falls Public Library a couple days ago to talk to them about their summer reading program. Here's what they had to say. This one, that one. What do you like about this one? I don't know. Kids are already picking out what book they want to read next for the summer reading program at the Wichita Falls Public Library. If the child can pick the book, they're going to have a lot more buy-in to actually reading that story. The summer reading program kicked off May 21st and runs until the start of school, giving kids an educational outlet during the summer months. You can see, so it's got a lot of pictures, a couple good sentences per page. Susan Cooper is the head of youth services at the Wichita Falls Public Library and says it's important to give kids the opportunity to exercise their brain during a time when it otherwise is on summer break. If you are a, a runner and you don't run for three months, then it's going to be hard for you to go and run when you get out and do it again. It's going to take you a while to get back up to where you were. Uh, the brain works the same way, so if a child goes three months in the summer without doing anything academic, then it's going to take them a while to get back in the swing of things when school starts. Here's how the summer reading program works. Kids and adults register at WFPL.net. Every day you log how many minutes or hours you've read. The more you read, the more opportunities you have to win prizes. And even though the summer reading program already started, you can still sign up. Summer reading is not just for kids, though. Uh, it uh, is for all ages so if you have a baby that you read to every day you can sign them up for summer reading as an adult you can sign up for summer reading and actually make sure that you're doing some productive brainy kind of stuff through the summer and whatever kind of book you dive into you're not only entering a world of imagination you're entering a world to a better you if you struggle with reading then you're going to have trouble with every other subject so the more we can encourage positive uh, reading habits and positive reading skills uh, in our kids the more successful they're going to be just all the way around a great opportunity there that the Wichita Falls Public Library offers and it's so easy to just give your child a book absolutely or absolutely. read them a book read them a book um, let them pick out the book. Make, mm -hmm. it, make it a fun thing for them. Um, during the school year, the teachers pick out the books, but um, in the summer, the kids can pick out their own books. Right, something that they're interested in. Um, Absolutely. That she mentioned in that story there that, you know, if they're interested in horses, get them a book about horses. If they're interested in uh, arts and crafts, get them a book about arts and crafts. So, or sports. Yeah, right, something that appeals to them. Absolutely. Uh, anything else that parents can do um, or something that you recommend that they do during the summer months? Well, enrichment, obviously, um, keep them thinking. Um, there's math things you can do. Um, we always talk about um, cooking. Um, you can use fractions and measurements um, when you cook or bake, um, and kids enjoy participating in things like that. Right. I feel like when I was a kid, math was the first thing that went out the door <laughs> when the Absolutely. summer months came. I mean, when I went back to school, that was something I feel like I had the hardest time getting back into. Math is something we don't think about practicing, mm -hmm. but you can practice it in everyday things. You can play um, old-fashioned games, Yahtzee and, and things like that, dominoes. Um, those all use numbers and counting and, and 
count money, take them to the store and let them actually purchase something and count back the change. Yeah, that's true. Is there a certain age group that is more likely to forget some of those skills that they learn during school? It's pretty prevalent through all through elementary school. Okay. Um, the younger ones tend to lose a little bit more, um, but all the way through elementary school and middle school. Okay. And yeah, I was reading here that 70% of teachers have to spend almost a full month reteaching students' yes. material at the start of the year, and that's because they haven't kept their minds active and they forget. That's right. That's right. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. Anything else that you can think of that parents can do, or maybe teenagers if they're if they're watching? Um, just stay active. The other part of being enriched and, and involved is uh, physical activity. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times our kids just want to sit with their iPads and tablets, although there are a lot of good apps um, that are educational apps that are good for the kids. Um, but outdoors activities, um, go to parks. Uh, Wichita Falls has some really nice parks uh, to do walking or bike riding and keep them outdoors. Yeah, and, and you mentioned app, uh, phones and iPads. I feel like when parents see their kids on their phone or their iPad, um, especially during the summer months, it makes them a little nervous. Okay, get off the technology. Right. Let's do something active. Exactly. But those could be good things. That, that, yes, being on an iPad or tablet is not always a bad thing. There are, like I said, there are a lot of apps that are educational apps. Um, people don't like to hear math drills, so we call it math practice. Right. <laughs> um, but there are all kinds of apps that can be fun um, that the kids can engage with. Okay, perfect. When we come back, Kathy's going to talk to us a little bit more about how to keep the kids' minds active. She's going to give us specific things that you can do to keep your kids' minds active during the summer months. Very important thing. We'll be right back after this. Good Sunday morning. We're still talking about how to keep kids' minds active and fresh during the summer months. Kathy Stearns with Sylvan Learning Center. Still joining me this morning, still hanging around. Thanks. And uh, look who she brought out, this little robot guy. This is so cute. We were, we were playing with it throughout the break. Uh, this is something that the kids make at Sylvan Learning Center through yes. a robotics program. We have a robotics camp that we offer throughout the summer. Um, it's geared for ages uh, first through six. We want to get the young ones interested in robotics. Um, so they actually build this guy. Um, we use Legos and it is attached to a laptop. So we do animate it and uh, he will roar. Um, and we have other robots that they will make as well. Um, but they can get creative with it once they've built him. Yeah, um, let's see what this guy can do. Okay. <laughs> that is amazing. and. Kids make this, which yes. blows my mind because this looks like something I wouldn't even be able to make. This was made by a second grader, actually. Wow. <laughs> okay. So now do you guys kind of show them step by step on how to make yes. this. And yes, they have. Okay. To, we have a laptop, and it step by step gives them instructions on how to do it. Um, and then they build other robots besides our little lion. Um, they build some birds and soccer players, and uh, the older ones will build cars. Um, we also have engineering now, and they're building okay. bridges and. Um, some other amazing things. Yeah, this is just ones. the simple one. Yeah, uh -huh, it is. <laughs> yeah, which is amazing. Um, something that surprises me is in, is robotics and that kind of stuff becoming more popular with kids. Because Absolutely. When you say robotics to me, I think, well, that's way over my head. No, um, S Sylvan has a focus, and a lot of our schools are too, um, on STEM, the science, technology, engineering, and math, because it is such a big field now um, and we're trying to get the young ones involved. A lot of the school districts have middle schools and high schools involved, but we want to get the young ones involved too. Yeah, start them out young. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, they learn um, terms like uh, pulleys and gears. There's a little motor attached to it and they, they learn what that does. Uh, okay. So it's very educational. Yeah. Can you show us again what it does? I'm sure. Uh, we were playing with this all break. I just like seeing what it does. How long does this take a, a child to put together? It took about an hour and a half. Um, and oh. it, it depends um, because we play and we also learn different terms. Um, we put uh, words up on the board and we talk about the vocabulary part of it. You mm -hmm. know, what does this word mean and, and what does it do? Yeah, and I like about it is that it incorporates Legos, something that I'm sure every kid knows what to do with Legos. Absolutely. <laughs> they, they know more than we do. <laughs> right. So you kind of put together something that they're familiar with, with maybe something that they're not, um, to kind of help them learn. Right. The other thing that we have besides robotics is coding. Um, we are teaching kids programming, um, and they are, are in our coding program. What they do is they um, they actually create a video game, um, and then they can access that video game after they finish the camp. 
Okay. Yeah, you say coding, and my <laughs> reaction is, uh, yeah. When we're talking, you know, third graders. <laughs> I know. So. I know. That's what amazes yeah. me so much. Uh, anything else about what you want to say, what you guys do at Sylvan Learning? Do you guys have any other programs? Absolutely. Um, summertime is an, an excellent time for our students to catch up if they need to. Um, we have reading, writing, math programs. Um, we tutor year-round. Um, and it's a great time for them to catch up if they need to or get ahead mm -hmm. um, so that when they hit that uh, school in September, they are ready to go and, and they're very confident. Yeah. Do you find that kids, especially with the robotics program, they catch on easily? They do. They do. It really keeps them stimulated. Okay, perfect. Uh, tell me a little bit about where people can go to sign up for these programs that they're interested in. Okay. You can go to sylvanlearning.com. Um, that's our website. Um, we are located here locally in Wichita Falls. Um, we are at the uh, Wichita Square Shopping Center at the corner of Camp and Caulfield. Um, we're right next door to the Rib Crib. Okay, yep, know, know where that is. Okay. <laughs> uh, after the summer, do you guys still have programs going on throughout the school year? Yes, we tutor year-round. Uh, the core programs, reading, writing, and math, we keep year-round. We also have study skills, um, SAT and ACT prep. Um, and we will continue the robotics and the coding through the school year also. Okay, perfect. And they still sign up for it through that website yeah. that we showed? Yes, or they can come into the center. Come see me. Yeah. <laughs> come see Kathy. She'll show you this little guy, show you what he does, and uh, get you signed up for a robotics class if that's yeah. something that you're interested in. Absolutely. Anything else that you want to say, something that maybe we didn't touch on about summer learning in general? Um, I would just say keep them active. Um, there are a lot of different camps that are available in Wichita Falls. Uh, the Park and Recreation Center has camps. The YMCA has camps. But keep them active. Keep them involved. Um, we have, like I said before, we have all kinds of parks that you know you can get them outside and, and do fun things. Yeah, and we said before, you know, phones and iPads, uh, they could be used for good things, and especially mm -hmm. like this, we're using Absolutely. a laptop for yep. coding. You said you guys create video games mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. And we use a laptop to do that as well. Yeah, so, so we talk a lot about screen time and kids needing to cut back on screen time, but mm -hmm. it, that, it could be helping them. They could be doing something educational on those. It's just kind of monitoring them. That's right. That's right. Okay, perfect. Kathy, thanks for joining me. Thank thanks you. for bringing along this robot. <laughs> Let's see him do a trick one more time. Okay. <laughs> I call it a trick. And I love the sound effect. Can you put different sound effects on it? Absolutely. I was just going to tell you, um, if they decide they want to use a different sound, they have a whole uh, library full of different sounds that they can use. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that's so fun for the kids to try out the different sounds <laughs> and, and that kind of stuff. And again, this is the beginner level. They go all, to, all the way to bridges. And yes, the engineering goes through eighth grade um, and they build, they can construct bridges, they construct cars. Um, we're having a big challenge where the, the kids are going to construct a car um, and they have to learn how to make it safe. Wow. Um, and it is a national, it's called the Grand Stem Challenge. Uh -huh. um, and they have to keep their passenger safe. And their passenger is a raw egg. So. Oh. <laughs> okay, that'll be uh, interesting. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, that will be. All right, Kathy, thanks for joining Thank me this you. morning. Thank you. We'll be right back on Inside Tech Soma. Good morning. Thanks for watching Inside TechSoma. We are again taking a look at ways you can keep your kids' minds active during the summer months. Another good idea is to take them to a museum, and why not bring one to a why not bring them to a museum right here in downtown Wichita Falls? Uh, the Museum of North Texas History. Charles Campbell, the executive director, joins me now. Charles, tell me a little bit about this museum, um, the things that you guys feature in it. A lot of stuff, I know. A lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, people are really surprised when they see how big this, the place is and mm -hmm. just how much stuff we have. We are the only general history museum in the city of Wichita Falls. There are other history-related museums, but we're the only one that is a general, broad-based okay. history museum. So we have lots of things to see. One thing to keep in mind for you parents, it's free admission. Mm -hmm. So that's always a good thing, especially during summer. And our air conditioning works really, really well. So <laughs> another bonus there. Yeah. Um, but as I said, we are a very broad-based general history museum. So we cover a lot of different subjects. Mm -hmm. A lot of those are reflected in our permanent collections, or in other words, exhibits that will always be there at the museum. OK. And you guys are located downtown Wichita Falls. I know a lot of people probably drive past it. I've never been in it. Um, but yeah, like you said, I'm sure they're going to be surprised when they go inside of it of just how big it is and how much stuff you guys have in it. 
Yes, and we're at uh, 720 Indiana in downtown, mm -hmm. between 7th and 8th on the west side of the street right. there on Indiana. So pretty easy to find in that sense. Uh, we also have three large art banners on the front of the building, so okay. that will help identify where we are. Getting back to the permanent uh, collections, of course we have an oil and gas area. Mm -hmm. Can't have a history museum in this area without having an exhibit on oil and gas. Right. Uh, the centerpiece there is a scale model of a complete drilling operation. This model was made a little over 30 years ago, but it's still pretty accurate uh, by today's standards. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool. You can see the entire operation, and most people don't realize everything that goes in yeah, to I'm a sure. drilling operation. Um, so we have oil and gas. We have a medical room, which is part of our permanent collection. Highlight there is an iron lung, which you don't oh. see every day and if you don't know what one of those is come on down and you can see it and we can explain to you how it works okay i will tell everybody that uh, has been a long time resident of wichita falls it is not the iron lung that was in the house on seymour highway and fairway okay <laughs> it's the same kind right. but it's not the exact same one okay uh, so that's two parts of our permanent collection another part is our native american room mm -hmm. we have lots of arrowheads, we have lots of reproductions of weapons and items that the Plains Indians would have used. We have a scale model of a teepee, we have some sure enough ancient pottery, various other items like that. Okay. Um, the really big part of our permanent collection would be the Heritage Hall, which okay. is really about Western heritage. Mm -hmm some truly uniquely Wichita Falls area items there. We have uh, a collection of cowboy hats that came from the cow lot. Mm. And everybody should know what the cow lot is. If not, again, we'll, come, we'll explain it to you when you get <laughs> yeah. there. Charles uh, will explain it to you. 500 hats that came from the cow lot. The collection is known as Nat's Hats, named after Nat Fleming, okay. who owned the store. And over the years, Nat would keep someone's old hat when they came in to buy a new one and had all of them up on display in the store and we have that collection. Uh, we also have the studio set from, uh, I'll have to mention this because it's one of your competitors, but RFD3, uh, Joe Brown's TV show mm -hmm. for years and years. Uh, we have the inside of the old Monroe Street Post Office and lots of other Western related items okay. in that room and we'll be adding some more but I don't want to tell you just yet because we haven't finalized everything okay but there will be some more uniquely Wichita Falls things there yeah uh, another big part of our permanent collection is the Bill English military collection we have six rooms filled with military items what makes it really really special is that 90 percent of what we have has come from people that have a direct tie to the North Texas area. Okay. So this isn't just random stuff right. that we've collected. These are things from people here. The other 10% came from uh, men who have attended the Iwo Jima Survivors Reunion over the last 36 mm -hmm. years. That's really what kind of started the whole collection and really helped start the Museum of North Texas History. Okay. But six rooms of military, uh, and it goes all the way from the Civil War up through uh, Desert Storm and the recent conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq. Wow. Okay. And what, what is neat about this museum is that it's all pertinent to this location. Um, you're probably going to see stuff that sparks memories in your mind that you maybe know stories about and stuff that you didn't even know happened here. Absolutely. That's one thing a lot of people in the area don't realize not just the amount of history that has occurred here but the significance of it right uh, the significance of events that have happened here and the significance of things done by people from here that yeah. have literally had a worldwide impact yeah because we talk about oil and gas well we mm -hmm. know that's north texas we talk about um, native americans well we know that's that's pertinent to texoma but a lot of people don't know the story behind it and that's right. kind of where you guys come in right and what we try to do, and this is a good way to help stimulate not just young minds, but all minds, 
we try to show that history is very, very relevant today. It helps explain where we came from, why we are where we are today, and why we are the way we are. But it also helps to show the potential for the future, mm -hmm. what can happen in the future. Right. And that's why we say that we bring history to life. Yeah. Uh, so history is not just some dull subject. It does have relevance, <laughs> and it's very interesting. Yeah. And there are lots of things to learn, lots of things to learn. So coming to the museum for both kids and adults alike can be a lot of fun and can be a great learning experience. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of stuff to see over at the museum. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some events going on at the museum in the next month or so that you might be interested in. We'll talk about that when we come back. Welcome back to Inside Texoma. We're talking about the Museum of North Texas History. It's located right here in downtown Wichita Falls. Charles Campbell joins me again this morning. Thanks for sticking around. Talking My about, pleasure. Talking about history. <laughs> um, Charles, tell us, tell us a little bit about the exhibits or the events that you guys have coming up in the next month or so. I know you guys are, are always busy over there at the museum. Always busy. Right. That's, that's true. There's always something going on. Uh, in terms of programs, on June 14th, uh, Kenny Mayo and his wife Susan and their band Post Oak will be presenting a program called Classic Country Music. They do this every year. Uh, we'll really focus on, as the title says, classic country mm -hmm. music. So if you're looking for stuff that you would hear on the radio today, you're not going to hear that. <laughs> right. uh, good bit of western swing thrown in there. Okay. Uh, this uh, program is free. So it's open to the public, and I believe, oh, he's, Kenny's going to kill me. Uh, I want to say it's 6.30 okay. on the 14th. Well, yeah, you'll have it, on, you have it on your website, I know. Yes, I yes, it, it yeah. is on the website <laughs> and, on, and on our Facebook page. Uh, then a week later, on June 21st, we are having a fundraising dinner out at the Wichita Falls Regional Airport. It's called Wings Over Wichita, mm -hmm. Past, Present, and Future. Okay. And it's going to celebrate uh, our Jenny DeJet exhibit out at the airport. That's also free admission. Anytime the airport's open, you can go see the Jenny DeJet exhibit. Mm -hmm. And the program is going to be really great. We're going to have uh, eight to 10 local combat aviation people okay. speak, tell some stories. And this goes all the way from World War II up through Desert Storm. Okay, this is uh, y'all's website yes. showing some pictures of the Jenny to um, yes. Jet exhibit. And this is at the, well, that's, that's pictures from the airport. Yes, the, okay. the whole exhibit is there at the airport. And half of it is about Caulfield and has our Jenny biplane. The other half is about Shepard and that has the T-38 jet. All right, interesting. So much history up here in North Texas. Yeah. And, and if you want to attend that dinner, just call the museum. Uh, and make reservations. Our deadline for getting reservations in will be the 15th, so okay. coming up pretty quick. Right. Um, going back to that tribute to classic country you were talking about, is that specific to Texas country or is that a broad look back at classic country? Uh, it, will be, it will be broad, but like I said, there'll be some Western swing in there and that's, that's pretty much, that's a Texas, right. Texas <laughs> bit there is Western swing. Right. Maybe so, a little two-stepping in there. As yes, well. <laughs> yes, and if people want to get up and dance, there we'll have room for them to do that. And that's yeah. that's happened before. We do this uh, program every year, and so there are always some people that want to get up and dance. Yeah, well, I'm sure. Sounds like a good one. Uh, talking about foot traffic through the uh, museum. There it is. That starts at seven. June seven. 15th. Sorry. Okay. Close enough. Uh, again, that's free admission to that. That sounds like a good time. Um, talking about foot traffic at the Museum of North Texas History, um, do you guys usually see more foot traffic through the summer months? Definitely. Definitely. And we're expecting that uh, this year. Our attendance so far this year is way ahead of where it was last year, hmm. up by 40% actually. Oh, okay. And we haven't even hit our traditionally busy time, which yeah. is during the summer months. Why do you think that is? Uh, Variety of reasons. More people know about us. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done uh, some work to try to promote our name and get our name out there. Uh, the CVB here uh, with the city and the Texas uh, Travel Information Center have okay. really helped promote us. Uh, all of the museums in town, we really try to help promote each other. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I think we're picking up some traffic from the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame, which is That's basically <laughs> right next door to yeah. us, which is great. That's, that's another great place to go. Mm -hmm. If you have any interest in professional wrestling, really cool place to yeah. visit. Yeah. Really cool. And it's all kind of centralized, so that right. helps. Right, <laughs> right. So that really helps. And we, we do expect uh, more traffic in the summer. Okay. What about kids? Do you see kids come through there a lot? Yeah. Uh, we've had a lot of families. Uh, in one sense, there's not something that kids can grab onto right. and play with. But we found that really isn't that much of a problem because, as I said, most of the time it's families coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do plenty of school tours. So if, if you've got a camp group during the summer, you're looking for something to do, uh, you can bring them down to the museum for a tour. Yeah, and it's a great educational experience. And they might surprise, your kids might surprise you about how interested um, they are about this stuff. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We we regularly get kids that come in, wow, this was really neat. Yeah. We really enjoyed that. And and we always say to them, well, come on back. We'll we'll be here. And we do see quite a few of them Perfect. come back again. Is there an exhibit in particular that they seem to be more drawn to? Uh, everybody loves trains, mm -hmm. railroads. And so <laughs> we, we have some model trains and uh, that should whet their appetite to see the real deal, which is over at the Wichita Falls Railroad Museum. So uh, again, we kind of try to promote each other. And you know, the Railroad Museum is right down there downtown as well. Right. Uh, but everybody loves the model trains. Uh, we have just set up a doll exhibit that oh. will appeal more to the, the girls than the right. boys. But that is the precursor to a permanent exhibit on dolls and toys that we'll be setting up in the next few months. Okay, so that'll be a big draw yes. for them. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, so parents, if you're looking for something to do with the kids during the summer months, the Museum of North Texas History, great opportunity um, to get them out and about, keep their minds going, and it's free. And one last thing, we also have a theater where we show videos. Okay. So we can show history videos and documentaries, uh, and that's another another way that everybody can be occupied and stimulated at the same time. Yeah, perfect. Visit their website, Museum of North Texas History, for hours and more information about their exhibits. Charles, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we'll see you back here next week on another episode of Inside Texoma. We'll see you then.